Thank you again, Mr. Bradley. Look here. You're nervous. Probably all unstrung over this attack on your privacy. How about another cocktail? Thank you, no. I've had my one for the evening. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you at dinner. I'm having dinner in my cabin. I'm turning in early. Then I'll see you around tomorrow in the swimming pool? Perhaps, if I decide to go in. Can't you keep on your own side of the pool? I'm not chasing you. I just turned up like an old cantaloupe rhyme. The ocean is full of them. Hey, wait, wait! Hey, maybe I'm the door-to-door brush man. Not today. Special offer. Full full set of kitchen brushes and a and a set of Charles Dickens. I haven't got a kitchen. How about a set of Dickens without the brushes? I couldn't afford it. You see, it's a contest, ma'am. The, the one that sells the most brushes gets sent away on a vacation. And the more you sell, the farther they send you? That's right. Hey, give me all you got. Yeah? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's what comes to trying to swallow the whole pool. Here, let me slap you on the back. Oh, that's enough. Unhand me. You know, your eyes are very large and beautiful. <laughs> oh, stop it. Even when they're bloodshot. <laughs> Will you tell me what this is all about? I don't know, but isn't it fun? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Now, look at me, really. I'm not such a boogeyman, am I? Just an honest, open face. A little too open, maybe. When are you leaving this boat, Mr. Bradley? Going all the way to Buenos Aires. How far do you go? All the way to Buenos Aires. Isn't it great, Dinah? Dinah? Yes, I know. The passenger list calls you Diane Lovering, but I call you Dinah. Well, in heaven's name, what? I had a black-faced doll when I was about a year and a half old. They called her Dinah. I loved her very dearly. Couldn't go to sleep unless I had it safely tucked away in a shoebox. I'm afraid I don't see the comparison. There isn't any, except Diane reminds me of Dinah, that's all. Oh. <laughs> there you go getting panicky again. I'm out for last, Dinah, that's all. Good. And you'd look pretty silly in a shoebox, anyway. Very silly. And I'm not a year and a half old anymore. Oh, I see. You're just backwards. Would it be forward of me to invite you to have a cocktail with me? Sorry, but I'm going to bed at 6 o'clock. Without your dinner? I'm having it sent to my cabin. Okay. Then I'll meet you in the bar at 6, and we'll have dinner afterwards. <laughs> Hello, Dinah. You're early. It's only a quarter of six. Then I've got 15 minutes to get back to my cabin. Now, how about just one cocktail? Well, I'll have a sherry flip. Sherry flip? What's the matter? Are you seasick? No, not the least. But sherry flips just like water. No tang, no feeling, no reach to it. I still like sherry flips. Okay, lady. I'll show you I can take punishment, too. Oh, Stuart, one sherry flip and a plain lemonade. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. I'm afraid you're a problem girl, aren't you, Dinah? What makes you think so? Well, you're a problem to me. And something tells me you're full of problems yourself. What did you come on this trip for? The ride? Mm Mm-hmm. Darn long ride. I wanted a long ride. Who's the guy? What guy? Well, every now and then your eyes are way out there on the horizon. There must be a guy behind a woman's eyes when they're like that. Would <laughs> you listen to the conceited male? Honest now, you're not engaged to be married? Would that be one of my problems? Might be. You ever been engaged? No. Don't tell me you've lived in a cave all your life. Don't you remember? It was a shoebox. A lemonade for the lady? Do I look as if I drink a sherry flip? Sorry, sir. Well, here's to the two of us. Long may we wait. You came on this boat looking for trouble, didn't you, Mr. Bradley? I admit it. But then you dropped out of the sky. But I'm not trouble. I know. And I've just about decided that you're something distinctly different. Something I've always wanted to meet. And always thought was just a kid's foolish dream. I'm afraid you're on the edge of saying something very silly, Mr. Bradley. It doesn't seem silly. And I've never been this close to the edge before. And let's forget you ever said it, shall we? All right. Until the day I can make you remember it. A good cure for that sort of sentiment is walking. Do you like to walk? Listen, young lady, I'll walk you around the deck tomorrow until you holler for help. Okay.
20 times around so far. How are you holding out? I haven't even started. Then let's go a little faster. What for? Because there are a couple of long-legged old school moms that look as if they want to race us. Oh. Good morning. Miss Weevils and I have just about decided that you two set the nicest face on the deck. We, uh, we like to walk past. So do we. I think we make a nice little squad, you might say. We'll all have to do this every morning. Yes, yes, it's a good idea. <laughs> you just keep leading the way and we'll follow. Hey, what do we do? Pull a fast one. You do it, I'm all out of that. All right, here goes. Oh, look at the whales. Where? Oh. Right alongside the ship, there must be a hundred of them. Oh, I don't see any. No? There aren't any whales there, Mr. Bradley. I'm afraid you're mistaken. No, no whales? Are you sure? Not a whale. Nothing but ocean. Gosh, you... You don't suppose... Not again. There, there, my poor dear Mr. Bradley. Well, what's the matter with you? Nothing, you see. They told me a sea voyage would cure me. I won't go back to that place again. They can't find me up in that room. Please call. Edith, come along. The man's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) There, you see, it works. That's what I call practical insanity. Do you always see whales? Only when being followed by long-legged school moms. Sometimes I see the Southern Cross. Really? If you'll come on the upper deck with me some night, I'll show it to you. Only uh, you'll see it, too. Will that mean we're both insane? I'm afraid that's too much to hope for. It's glorious. Where's the Southern Cross? Right up there. Where? There. Right along the line of my finger. Oh, I see. Oh, how beautiful. You're telling me. We're looking at the Southern Cross, Mr. Bradley. You speak for yourself. I'm going to do all the looking at you I can our last night on board ship. Are you coming out to my ranch in Buenos Aires? I... I'm afraid I won't have time. I've only two days and I've been shopping and things to do. Where are you stopping? Uh, with some friends. Who are they? The, uh, the Wilsons. The Wilsons? Mm-hmm. I never heard of them. I've lived there ten years, know everybody in town. Take uh, another name. No, no, really. They moved down last winter. Now, look here, Dinah. What's behind all this? Are you still scared of me? Why should I be scared of you, Mr. Red? I asked you, Dinah. Oh, it's all wrong. We weren't meant to end this way. We weren't ever meant for anything else. Goodbye, Mike Red. I'll think of you often, and good luck. All right. So long, Dinah. Just the same old thing. Shipboard friends who never see each other again, right? Right. I don't believe it. Oh, but you must. I don't believe it. So long, Dinah. It's the following morning, and Diane thinks she has escaped from Mike by telling him she's visiting the Wilsons, some non-existent friends. Outside her luxurious hotel, she waits for a groom to bring the horse she's ordered for a morning ride. Miss Lovering. Yes? I am Mr. Partos, assistant manager of the hotel. There has been a slight delay about your horse. I shall phone the stables again. Thank you, Mr. Partos. Uh, Madame has been made comfortable, I hope. Oh, perfectly. The flowers in my room are gorgeous. Mr. Field ordered them for you every day, madame. Oh, did he? Oh, oh, Mr. Potter, I shall want a guide today, someone who knows the city. I have already arranged for the guide, madame. Can he speak English? But see, senorita, I will speak the English for 25 years. Allow me, senorita, to present myself. Senor Pancho Mike Bradley at your service. Oh, Mike, where did you bob up from? You, you scared me. Oh, still a boogeyman, huh? <laughs> no, but how did you happen to be here? Well, I thought I'd drop around and say hello to the Wilsons. Nice little cottage they have here. Lots of servants, guests. Are they home? No, but they left word for me to mind the children. I was taking the twins to see the executions on the plaza. Mm, little Otis is tall for his age, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Or do they have him stretched? <laughs> Mike, are you a bloodhound, or is this just accidental? I'm a bloodhound who can read trunk checks when a lady carelessly leaves her trunk outside her stateroom. Besides, Mr. Pato's here is a friend of mine. He owes me money. Oh, so he told you I was going riding at 10 o'clock. Exactly. So I thought you'd like to ride out on a Bradley ranch, where horses are horses, not candidates for the bullring. I'd love to, Mike. 
That's better than I hoped. Let's go. Mike, let's slow down to a gallop. All right. Oh, boy. Oh. Let's get off and rest a while. I brought a couple of thermos bottles of cold tea in my saddlebag. Hmm? On shipboard, lemonade, and cherry flips. On the pampas, cold tea. I forgot to ask the name of my horse. Chili Con Carney. I'm glad to meet you, Chili. Hey, you got a cold, wet nose. Tell her she shouldn't smell so nice, Chili. Where do we hit them? To a blade of grass? Just throw your reins over his head. He'll stand like a sentinel. 